so this is our friend Joe Esposito. Joe, take take over the story from there, and we'll just see where God leads tonight. Okay. 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 Um, it was. This is. I don't know if this is um, what I'm going to be sharing is somewhat radical um, to many in the Christian faith, but um, I was born again. Uh, I had this born again experience with Jesus when I was 19 years old coming out of the drug culture of the 60s. And I um, was studying a lot of Eastern philosophy um, and was, uh, after doing it for quite a while, I became kind of tormented. And these people introduced me to Jesus. I prayed a prayer. And within a few weeks, God had totally changed my life. I had an encounter with the Lord where I experienced his love and his forgiveness. And it really changed me from the inside out. I winded up giving my life to him in such a way that I studied for ministry and became a pastor and started churches and that kind of thing. Uh, got married, have five children. Justin was our first. Um, was serving with Brenda at a church called New Coming Fellowship when there was an accident. And um, 1230 at night, we got a call from the police that Justin had been in a car accident. He was on his way to the hospital. We didn't know if he would live. And um, when we got to the hospital, it was the worst call, the typical, you know, worst nightmare a parent could have to get that kind of call. And uh, he was uh, 19 years, I think, 19 years old. Um, and he, um, the doctor said he was paralyzed. He had a, he had a um, C, C4, C5, C6 uh, cervical injury. And left him, and they said he was paralyzed for the rest of his life, um, and that he would require twenty four seven caregiving. Um, well, that next year um, was very, very intense. Our whole family, the whole lives of everyone in our family, changed. We had to change our house to make it handicap accessible. I had to learn how to be a nurse because we weren't going to put him in a nursing home. And so I decided to take care of him at home. And within two years, really, I had to pretty much resign from all form of ministry. And uh, after, after that, I became very, very depressed. Um, it seemed like my, our lives just went from kind of a normal Christian life to, to, I don't know if I could say hell, but it was really, really hard to go through what we were going through. Every, all of our futures radically changed. My son the most, um, you know, my thoughts of him not having, uh, not being able to get married or have children, um, not being able to do so much other things that other people were doing. Um, and he was a smart kid, um, just had a lot, a lot of life to live. And I just mourned over his loss and then I mourned over my own loss because my life would never be the same. I'd be, I didn't know how old I would be till, you know, till I passed and then what was going to happen to him. Um, he'd have to go into a home. All those things really haunted me for a while. And, um, and I really actually became angry at God. Even, <laughs> here I was in ministry. I was a Christian. I had experienced God's love for me in so many ways. And then I, I actually started getting mad at God. Um, I always tell people that it was the enemy found something in me to attack. And he, he did a great job. He was, he's, the scriptures call him the accuser of the brethren. And he accused me before God and accused God to me. And I fell for it. And I, uh, for five years, I basically told God I didn't want to serve him anymore and that I was done. And I started drinking more and that kind of thing. Um, I didn't do anything terrible because I loved my family and I was taking care of Justin. But in my heart, I was far away from God. And, um, and everything went from bad to worse for our family. It, it, was, a, it was really a Job experience. <laughs> Anybody who knows the story of Job, kind of a mild version but for me, it was like huge. And um, so at the at the end of five years, Justin, all during this time, right after Justin's accident, Justin totally gave his life to Jesus, totally 
um, just wanted to serve him. And, uh, and so he was involved in ministry from the get go all the time that I was, I was kind of sleeping and mourning. Justin was going after God. And, um, and I kept, he kept on saying, dad, can we do this ministry? Can we do this ministry? And I said, look, if you can find somebody to drive you, you can do whatever you want. I ain't doing it. <laughs> That's where my heart was at. And then one day, Justin's watching, uh, it was 7707. Justin's watching this, this uh, national prayer day um, of 50,000 young people who are gathered in Nashville and they're worshiping and they're praying for the nation. And he calls me over. He said, Dad, you got to see this. And so I, I walk over and, and, you know, just like John was just singing those songs, these kids were singing and worshiping. And I'm telling you, the song of the Lord just grabbed my heart and just broke me. It just broke me. And, the, and I ho heard the Holy Spirit inside of my heart saying, Joseph, your time of grieving is over. And, um, and so, you know, Justin was so taken, he, he said, Dad, can we do what they call a house of prayer? Can we just gather people from all over our city and begin to worship and pray for our city and pray for our nation on a weekly basis? And I said, you know what? I talked to Patty about it, and we all three agreed that we should do it. And so, I mean, John, Brenda, you know, John came and, and – was with us in the house of, in fact, people from your church came with John many times to minister in our house of prayer. And we would worship for a few hours and pray and intercede for the country and the nations of the earth and whatever the Lord led us to do. But anyway, during those first few months of doing this, I, I told the Lord, I said, God, I said, I don't know what happened, but I didn't pass this test very well. And, um, I'm going to need more than what I had before in my Christian life. Um, if, if I'm going to make it, you know, through the, the trials and the temptations of what life is before me. And he told me, he said, Joseph, if you give yourself to prayer, I'm going to open up the heavens. And I'm going to teach you that heaven above is also heaven within. I had never considered that it always was kind of separate to me that when you, you know, where we go when we die is kind of different than Jesus coming into our hearts. And then I began to study the scriptures, began to read books. And sure enough, I could find no one who would challenge the reality that heaven above is also heaven within. In fact, the very thing that Jesus came from heaven, right, went back to heaven and then said, I have to send my Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to teach you all about heaven. <laughs> everything and every every parable that Jesus spoke, you know this? Every parable that Jesus spoke was about the kingdom of heaven. He was trying to teach the Jewish people that he like he was trying to show them and teach them where I came from is a different place. And, and I'm going to tell you guys how this place functions. It's kind of the laws of earth are different than the laws of heaven. And Jesus came from heaven to teach us the laws of another realm. He says, and the laws of this realm are like this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who are merciful for they shall obtain the mercy. These are the laws of another realm. And, and he, and now I knew these things, but he began to take me deeper and deeper into revelation understanding that literally um, rocked my world and changed my heart. I began to, he said, I want you to open up your, your imagination, Joseph. I'm going to, he said, I gave you an imagination so that you can encounter the things of heaven. And I'm, I was a rational guy. I said, I don't know what to do with that, Lord. You know, um, you know, I know how to use my imagination to start businesses, to, you know, come up with ideas and, you know, to, <laughs> to lust after money. I don't know, you know, all those kind of things that people do with their imaginations. 
Uh, and uh, I said, I don't know, you know, imagination about heaven. He said, yes, I'm going to I'm going to show you how heaven works. And he said, I gave you a, an imagination so, to stir those things that are about me um, in your heart. And then he opened up scriptures like in Philippians where it says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, uh, think about these things. And so there's plenty of places in scripture where the Lord is, is, the Holy Spirit is telling us, use your imagination for the good. And so God began to, I, get, I began to experience in this house of prayer. And here was the niche. I always loved praying, but I never spent hours in the prayer room. And so what I found was being worshiping God for hours and praying was like stepping into God's living room in heaven. And so the things that you guys and we all experience, that's one of the reasons we love to go to church is because we love to worship, right? When we sing those songs, um, we encounter something of God's presence in our lives and it encourages us and it touches us and it warms our hearts and so what we're experiencing is we're experiencing the presence of God and we're experiencing, even though we can't see them, angels and, and we're, there are things going on around us that nobody sees, but we sense it. We feel it, but we can't, we, we don't have a paradigm to, to turn a switch on and see what's really going on in the spirit realm. And so really what the Lord was, it, my story, and this is my testimony is that God used this, this, this time of prayer that we did two times a week, sometimes two, three, four, five hours uh, a night to basically train me in heaven's ways and to teach me how to experience heaven on earth. And so um, uh, the, the care for Justin, never let up. In fact, it got harder and harder. Uh, anyone who knows uh, caregiving someone who's paralyzed, they have all kinds of medical issues that come up with bed sores and and um, because their bodies are paralyzed, they don't know what's going on. So they, they would get medical issues and not know it and then they have to go to the hospital. We had to do that a lot of times. Um, but all during the, from 2007, the last year, um, God was changing me from the inside out. I was literally falling in love with Jesus. I was literally falling in love with my father in heaven. And, you know, the scriptures talk about um, God wants us to be his friend. Um, I'd like to read just a little, little scripture here in Psalms 27, if anybody has their Bibles. Uh, verse 4. This is the King David sharing. He says, one thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And this is what I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of God all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire, to ask questions in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion and in the secret place of his tabernacle, he will hide me and he will cause me to sit on the high places of the earth. That's King David in his time. And here I'm finding the very thing that David was saying was true of me, that I, that I was becoming one who loved being in God's house. And I loved inquiring of him. Because now I was beginning to hear my father in heaven's voice. And I was beginning, it was beginning to click that heaven above, for a lot of loved ones that we love go when they pass, uh, is also heaven in me. How can that be? How can that be that, and so the Holy Spirit said, look, the, the, the scriptures tell you, Joe, that, that you've received the seed of promise. The seed of new birth, when you receive Christ, you receive the seed of new birth in your heart. It's the seed of promise. It's the, it's, you know, and God shows us in creation that a tree is, comes from a seed, right? So the fullness 
of what an apple tree is, is already embodied in the seed of the apple. Everything that apple is going to be as a tree and all the fruit it's going to bear for all the years is embodied in that little seed. When we receive Christ, we receive him as that seed and that seed begins to grow inside of us and we're transformed. The more, the more we look into the eyes of Jesus, the more we learn to gaze, to, to allow our hearts to, to look upward and to gaze upon him with the inner man, the more we encounter him and the more that, that tree of life within us begins to grow and grow and grow. And all of a sudden, we're beginning to see heaven in us. Take you toward the end of my story. Um, when Justin's accident happened, I felt. I felt hopeless. I felt depressed. I felt broken. And here I am coming into these years of experiencing God and through all the suffering and pain that Justin went through and all the sacrifice that I went through, God began to teach me how to be his child in serving my son and to, to, to um, basically be filled with God's spirit and loving him and taking care of him. So as I said, I, I really grew to love God more and more. And then Justin got sick last October. Um, like, you know, he, like he did all the time, he would get sick and we'd have to take him to the hospital. Sure enough, he got sick. We took him to the hospital. Little did we know that he had acquired a kidney stone, um, which had taken up the whole kidney, one of his whole kidneys, and caused uh, an infection in the system, and he was sepsis. And he was dying, and he didn't want to go. Um, he thought he'd make it through, but he went, I mean, he, he went into uh, sedation rather quickly. They flew him to Georgetown Hospital. They tried to, um, they tried to help him. They tried to um, deal with the infection, and he it just didn't make it, just didn't make it. And he went home to be with the Lord. Well, two days before that, two days before that, I was sitting on my couch and my phone rings. And you know how you put people's names in, in your phone that you know, right? So, you, you know, you have their phone number and you write their name and they become a new contact, that kind of thing. Well, my phone rings and it's, it's a name is Angela Wills. And I'm looking at it. And I don't know an Angela Wills. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says to me, he said, Joseph, take the A off Angela, take the S at the end of Wills and put it on Angela. And what do you have? My angel's will. Angel's will. And so the father said to me, my angels will take care of Justin. And so I knew at that moment that Justin was going home. This was three days before he went that he was going home to be with the Lord. And I told the Lord, I said, God, you know, the first time around when his accident happened, I faulted and I fell. I said, this time, enemy ain't getting me. I love you too much. And, and sure enough, Justin went home three days later. And I'm telling you, the comfort of heaven, all the years that I spent in that prayer room, um, came more alive to me than ever before. And I was experiencing, and this sounds a little crazy, I was experiencing my son in heaven with Jesus at his, at his service. <clears throat> if you're on Facebook, you can look up, uh, look up under my name and you can actually watch the service. Um, I had a vision of my son over the casket and, he, and I'm, I'm just worshiping, we're worshiping and I'm weeping and I'm crying. And Justin, I have this vision of Justin. He's standing next to Jesus and he's, his arms are open wide and he's glistening with this crystal glisten of, um, and he's just full of this joy and he's just emanating the beauty of Jesus. And he looks at me and he says, dad, don't weep. 
don't weep. He said, keep your gaze on Jesus. And that was, that was the end of that vision. And it just blew me away. And um, two days later, I was sitting on my deck, just praying and worshiping, giving my heart to the Lord. And Justin was with Jesus again. And Justin said, Dad, he said, I have a word for you from heaven. He said, you've been, you've been in the, the secret place of prayer for 15 years. And God has put a deposit of grace in you from heaven. He wants you to give it away. And it was, it was almost like my son was commissioning me <laughs> to go <laughs> and share life with others and to share the story about heaven in us. And so, uh, really, that's in a capsule. That's kind of, you know, um, the first song that John sang tonight. It said he, he talked about the blood of Jesus and how we're forgiven and how Jesus is calling to each one of us and how the father's arms are open wide. I mean, this is, these are not just words. This is reality. This is, this is real stuff that God's heart is open to each one of us, that his arms are just ready to enfold us. And all he's asking us to do is something that we talk about a lot, but don't do a lot. And that's pray and worship. And so my encouragement to everyone tonight is, is try spending a few hours. Like, like you know, you, you'd have to kind of break some trends in your thoughts. <laughs> you'd have to get through some things. But if you do it enough, what's going to happen is you're going to encounter the God of heaven talking to you. And when he begins to talk to you, People, I used to do family counseling. Brendan knows I used to do. People would come in with all kinds of problems, and we would we would walk them through issues of forgiveness over their families and problems, to, you know, to help them draw close to God and to get healing. Now people come to me and they say, "Hey, Joe, can you can you do some some inner healing counseling?" And I say, "I tell you what, spend spend a few hours with me in the prayer room for a couple of months, and and let's see." If you're not visited by your father in heaven who loves you so much more than I do. And let's see if he won't heal you of the things that you're hurting from. And I mean, he certainly, he took me, I, you know, talk about a prodigal son, right? I mean, I ran away from God. And when I came back, I'm telling you, he threw a party and he welcomed me in more than I had ever been welcomed in before, or, or so it seemed anyway. And, and these last 15 years, um, I'm experiencing things of heaven that I have never experienced in my whole life. And it's getting more and more profound and more and more significant. And so, um, so I, I tell you, each one of you this, because the Christian faith it's not, you know, it isn't just a practice that we do to be good people and then die and go to heaven. It's a journey. It's a journey where we're learning on earth to be sons and daughters of our father as Jesus himself was. Right? And, and, and it doesn't matter how old we are or how young we are. The, the doors, Jesus opened the doors wide. He said, he said look, just allow yourselves Give yourself permission to come into my presence and to love me. Give yourself permission to worship me with all of your heart and, and give yourself permission to dance before me. Give yourself permission to just be free to love me with everything you have, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, and with all of your heart. And watch what happens. Something new something crazy significant will blow you away. And it's the God of heaven who you've been following all your life. Amen.